All right, welcome back. So today we're going to be doing buffer overflows on um, structured exception handling (SEH) overflows. Uh, so this one's going to be a little harder than the one we did earlier. I think I'm going into a blind, so I don't really know. I downloaded the program so far. I did send that download out on Discord. So, but it's going to be for the MP3 Studio. So MP3 Studio, uh, I believe it's called Millennium MP3 Studio. And we are going to do it on this guy right here. So let's go ahead and open him up and we'll go ahead and attach a uh, attach him to Immunity Debugger. Let's make sure we run as administrator for this guy, yes. Actually, can I open it up within Immunity Debugger so I don't have to keep reattaching everything this time like I did last time? Let's see. Oh, that was Control F2. I don't know what the heck I just did with that. Uh, let's go ahead and go to File, New. I think I just opened up the Ant Server. Open, and we'll try to attach this guy. So we'll go into uh, Desktop. All right. Go down to MP3 Studio. Can I attach him like this? Yes. All right, cool. So he's attached. All right. So the first thing we want to do, obviously, is we want to start with making our exploit, right? Supposedly, MPF. Uh, if you load an MPF file with this guy, he can play back a uh, music. Supposedly that is what is vulnerable. So let's go ahead and open up uh, Notepad++ here. Uh, we'll make a file new, and we will call this, um, let's see here, we'll, we'll just, whatever we save it, we'll call something. So let's go ahead and start off with file equals, because supposedly it has to do an MPF file, MPF. So this is going to be just like kind of like the um, last one we, that we did for uh, for the other player, the MP3 player there, that allowed us to um, to overwrite it. We have to actually make a file and then drop that file into it, right? So let's go ahead and do buffer equals, we'll start with, I guess, 500. So we'll say A, whoops, A times 500. You can make this bigger. So the last one I couldn't make bigger. Bigger. So let's go ahead and view. See if we can actually do like Control Plus. This one. No, you cannot. There we go. Okay. So buffer equals A times 500. And then from here we have to write that file. Right. We have to open it, write it, and close it. Right. So we'll do an F equals F equals open, or is it F open? Um, F equals open. Then we do file, and then we have to write to it. I'm trying to remember what we did last time. Looking back at my notes for what we did last time to be able to do this. F dot write. Yep, yeah, and then buffer, obviously. Write the buffer to that file. Then F dot close. Like that. All right, that should be it, like right there. And then we can print. File saved as. So file or print. File saved as. And then I think we can do a plus sign uh, file. You have to go like this to do that. Plus file, like that, I think it is. And then we'll say file saved as whatever file it is. So we do something like that, okay. And let's go ahead and save that. So file, we'll save as, and we'll call this, um, I don't know, exploit.pf. Exploit.mpf or actually uh, exploit.py would be a .py, so we'll call this one a mp3 exploit.py. So it's still going to be a Python script that we're running. Once we open him up, it'll open up the exploit, right? So let's go ahead and run that guy. So we got our mp3 exploit, like right here.py, right? Let's go ahead and double click him, and we should see something. Yep, exploit.mpf. Now, how many bytes did we do at first? We did 500, so let's go ahead and drop him into, um, I don't see this guy running at all, oh, F9, so we'll run him, see if he opens up. There we go. So if we drop him into there, anything happen? Do we see A's anywhere? He's still running. Maybe we need more A's. All right, so we said 500, let's try said, 5,000? No. Um, we'll work our way up. So let's go ahead and let's try to send uh, so that was 500, maybe 1,000. Save that. 
Then from here we'll go back and we'll try that again. Exploit MPF, we'll drop it in there. Get anything? Nope, he's still running just fine. The IP's not overwritten. Uh, do I have to do the exception? Shift F9, nothing, okay. So nothing so far. All right, let's go ahead and uh, change that up to strike 2000. Save that. Exploit MPF, drop him in there. He's still running. Still nothing. So we haven't crashed anything yet. Let's go ahead. Suppose these guys are vulnerable. The MPF files. 3000? Let's go 4000 to 5000. And then 40,000. <laughs> Alright, we're starting something out here. 3,000. Still nothing yet, though, it doesn't look like. Uh, shift F9. Yep, so we're not, we don't have to pass any type of exception yet. So that was 3,000. You know what? I keep doing this, and I keep dropping in the same file, and I'm not rewriting it. So right now we're at 4,000. So if 4,000 breaks, we're going to have to work our way back down again. So let's try that. Boom, I just kept sending 500 at it. 4,000 not break it. Okay, so it's still going strong. Okay. Um, so 4,000 A's did not, did not break it. Just trying to see if we can see them anywhere. That's all. All right. Um, let's go ahead and go up to 5,000. 4,000. 5,000 A's. See if this breaks it. Delete my exploit. Rerun MP3 exploit. Drop band there. And we still didn't break it. Jesus, is this thing actually working? <clears throat> Supposedly it's vulnerable. Let's restart him. 5,000. Do we have to do it like that, or how do we actually do it? Do we drop him in like that? Supposedly that's how it's vulnerable. Is with an MPF file. So now I'm just trying to figure out. Because we're at 5,000 now. And we need to. We need to break this guy at some point. You know? So. Maybe. Maybe we need to have to have him attached and not just running. Maybe we need to actually attach him. Let's go ahead and that's what we had to do with our last uh, SCH was actually attach him, right? So let's go ahead and exit exit out of here. Right click. Right click runs administrator. Yes, we'll do a control F1 to attach him. We'll go from there. Control F1 and oh, we got to have him running first. Go ahead and open up the MP3 Studio. It opens up differently, like that. And then we'll do a Control F1, and we'll attach MP3 Studio to him. We'll say attach that. Okay. And then we'll try to send that 5,000 off again. So let me go ahead and make sure that's even correct. Make sure this is even going to work. 80 times 5,000. It didn't print file saved as um, print buffer. Let's go ahead and grab him. I'll just get to throw him in my Kali machine like real quick. And do I even have Kali open? Is the next question now? Yeah, I do. I'm just going to throw him in here like real quick and just do a Python like real quick, see if he even works. Do a Python. Do nano exploit.py Python exploit.py Yeah, it does work. Okay. It definitely works. Alright. Um, I don't know why I said print buffer. It's really just going to print out buffer. Let's go ahead and double click on him again. Have him right to that. Drop him into there. Did it actually drop? Oh, okay, we crashed. All right, so yes, we have to attach it because we're going to be doing SEH. So uh, let's go ahead and do a Shift F9. And doesn't look like we... Okay, we overwrote EDX. Doesn't look like we overwrote the EIP. Do I do another Shift F9? 
Yep, we did. Okay, cool. So we overwrote the EIP. Okay, so we passed along those exceptions, right? Overwrote that EIP. So everything's looking pretty good so far. Um, let me go ahead and see if we can make this any bigger. Nope, font 6, which is big as what we can get. So we did overwrite the EIP. So now, as usual, we need to go ahead and um, start to find those, um, find like where we crashed at, right? I'm also taking notes on this too as I do it. So if you don't see me kind of clicking over on Windows Flake a little bit, it's because I'm back in my calendar machine actually taking the notes on doing this also. So it's uh, this one's called MP3, MP3 Studio, Millennium, MP3 Studio. And I'll bring you guys back over to my calendar machine so you guys can see me taking notes or whatever else. Okay, so, so far what we did was we, we got the... Um, first, patch MP3 Studio to Immunity Debugger. Okay, and he actually has to go underneath that guy. He has to fall into place with him. There we go. How did I do that? So we started that right. Well, actually, we'll right click. We'll add a sub node. It will say starting. MP3 Studio, MP3 Studio. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and copy exactly what I just did there. Boom, boom. All right. Uh, from here, next thing we want to do is we did crash the program, so we can put in crashing program. All right, and we can go back to my Windows machine. I'm just going to take a quick snipping tool of what we used to crash it with. So you'll see that here in a second new you grab that boom okay so now we got that guy right um let me get back over to my Kelly machine control v okay crash at 5000 bytes and over row eip over row eip after um <clears throat> after let's see it was accepted was Structure after exception was exception was made for SEH. All right, so we crashed that 5,000 bytes right after the exception was made for SEH. Now what we have to do is we got to start to try to figure out what the offset is, right? And we're going to do that the same way that we always have been. So we are going to do a um, MSF MSF uh, pattern create. Create, right? Tack L, and we're going to do 5000. So there's our pattern to create 5000, right? Let me go ahead and copy this also. So I like to put all these in my notes too. Boom. All right. And then we'll say finding offset. Control V, there we go. Okay, so we found that offset, right? And we got to put that offset, or we have to find it, we created the offset. We got to put that into our. Windows machine into um, as our buffer. Okay. So let me go ahead and restart this program and as buffer this time we are going to go ahead and put in maybe I'm not. Did I copy that? I don't think I copied it over. We go ahead and put in all those 5,000 A's that we just created. Full shift C. Full V. There we go. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and save that now. Let's reattach this to Immunity, which means I have to exit out, uh, reopen up MP3 Studio, and then right click over as administrator. And we're going to go ahead and rerun this guy, attach him. MP3 Studio, attach that. All right, and we'll go ahead and run that guy, then we'll find that offset, right? So let's go ahead and throw this guy into it after I run him. F9, get him up and running. All right, and then we'll go ahead and throw that back into him. After I make a new one, I keep doing that too now. Because I'm used to doing the last one where I can just boom, 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 just drag and drop it over. Okay, there we go. So that throws everything again. Uh, I'm, I am paused again, Shift F9. Shift F9 again. 
Oh, crap. Crap, hold on. Okay, well, that's the EIP value, actually. That's actually what we want. Never mind, that stays the same. I'll say we're not looking for A's, are we, anymore? So 4632846. Let's go ahead and copy that selection to clipboard. Okay, we'll get back over to my counting machine. And we'll go ahead and find what is that offset, right? So let's go ahead and see what the offset is. So MSF pattern offset. We sent 5,000 at it, right? 5,000. Tac Q would be this guy right here. We have an exact offset of 4166. Okay, cool. So now we have an exact offset of 4166. Now remember with SEH, just like I was talking about earlier, you have an NSEH and SEH, right? You know, we do a buffer. Yes, we are doing a buffer overflow today, Rockstar. All right, so we have NSEH and then SEH. So we do have to do four bytes of Bs, which are going to fill up your NSEH, four bytes of Cs, which are going to fill up your SEH, and then maybe like another 500 bytes of, you know, Ds or whatever else. Okay, something like that, right? So we have to be able to go through all that stuff because we have to fill up that NSEH to make sure we can actually control um, the actual SEH. All right, NSEH is a different pointer for it. So let's go ahead and grab, we're going over a more hardcore version of it, um, Rockstar, but uh, yes, we are doing buffer overflows. So let's go ahead and hop back into my Windows machine now, and we have an offset of 4166, and we will write that down right to be able to show that, hey, here's our offset and everything, so let's get back into our file here. Whoops, that's not really what I wanted, but it doesn't matter. I might get out here anyways. Okay, we're going to say offset. Offset is 41, 4166. Is that what I had? 4116. 4116. Okay, so there's my offset now. So now my buffer is going to equal 4116 A's, right? Delete all that. So we're going to say A times 4116. Okay, we say buffer plus equals B, 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 or B times 4, buffer plus equals C, 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 and it will say buffer plus, plus equals, and it will say D times 500. Okay, see if we can make sure that we can fit something behind SEH. So this is going to be our NSEH, we believe. So we'll say N S E H. And then this one we're hoping is gonna be our S E H. S E H and then um, extra for future shell code. And our offset is 41 4116. I keep on to say 4166, 4116. So let's go ahead and save that now. Get rid of this exploit. Uh, redo that guy. We'll go ahead and open up a muty debugger. Open up um, MP3 Studio, get those two up and running right, and we'll attach him again. So Control F1, MP3 Studio, attach him on there, CPU, boom. All right, cool, so now we're here again. Let's go ahead and start him up, F9, get him running, and we'll go ahead and drop that exploit back into there, and we'll see, can we control that EIP value? Everything froze, it seems like. Shift F9, okay. Our EIP is 4242-4242. Um, are we controlling that EIP with the C's, or did it take those B's? Shift that not again. Okay, so the EIP like right now is 42424242. So I actually wanted to see 43434343, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and run it one more time. At least I'm pretty sure that's what I wanted to see. Was that? I don't know. Four twos may be okay. Also, it may just be showing me the NSEH, not the actual SEH. But we can find that out here in a second. Let's go ahead and uh, reattach him again. So we'll go back to Ant Server. Nope. MP3 Studio. Attach him. Why is my Ant Server still open running also? F9. Okay, maybe just because it ran it before. So it's like, hey, I can run this if you want. Uh, then we'll go ahead and throw that back into him. Exploit into there. Everything freezes. Shift F9. Or actually, we got... Here we go. So we have all of our A's here. A's. A lot of A's, 4,100, 
4,116 just to be exact. All right. A goes to pointer. So we put too many in. Oh, we did put too many in. We put four too many because usually I do the Bs right here. So we did put too many in. So now 4116 minus 4 equals 4112 because then our NSEH will be the Bs. Then our SEH will be the Cs. Let's go ahead and save that. And make sure that our EIP does actually show 4141441. Something or four threes, excuse me, 4343 four, three, four, three, four, three for EIP. Something I am scared of though is this guy right here. You notice in the Ds we have a great grouping underneath there. Except for maybe like right there. But we have this really good group from here to right here. Right? We have all this. But what we don't have is a good group right here. So we're definitely going to have to jump. We have to jump from this guy down into here somewhere. So I'm noticing those zeros like right there. That's going to break our code. But let's go ahead and get get it so I, I, it's right where I like it at. Let's do that first. Um, so this is save now. Boom, boom. My administrator. This is really just for me, like right here. This is just so I could look at it and say, yep. Attach. Um mp3 studio because we just saw that we can that we did attack it it did work but let me go ahead and this is more just for my notes and things like that so i say yeah it works the same way that i've done everything else uh so yeah so now we got all these a's and everything i'm going to scroll down let me say do not pass exception yet because we should see did i take it down because se handler is still all those i thought i took it down to 4112 Plus 4Bs, plus 4Cs. Did I not save that? Control S 8,000 times. Let me try that one more time again. Right click. Run as administrator. Because we should see Cs for there, not Bs. should see a lot of Cs. Attach him. Whoopsie daisy. File, attach, MP3 Studio, attach him, exploit MPF, and I just put it in there, but I haven't run it yet, so hopefully they actually took it. Okay, we got those A's, there we go. My, let me guess, I'm not deleting him again, am I? And everyone's probably yelling at like right now that I'm not deleting it, and I haven't actually looked at that. <clears throat> I'm probably not deleting it again, so let's go ahead and delete that exploit. Control us a thousand times, get him running, get him running, right click, open up on the mutant debugger, yes, and now let's pass that except I keep doing that. Moving too fast. Alright, so let's go ahead and get him, control F1, MP3 Studio, attach him right, go ahead and get him up and running, F9, let's make it run, throw him into there, alright, go back into mutant, he did crash, we got our A's here, alright, and... B's are going to our NSEH, C's are going to our SE handler. Let me go ahead and grab that real quick, that snipping tool. Boom. Alright. And we will go ahead and throw that into here. Finding offset. Um, controlling EIP. And remember, we are not going to pass to control the EIP. We are not going to... Uh, do not press F, shift F9. Alright, so we control the EIP now, right? We put all C's in there. If we actually do a shift F9, we will see that the EIP should change. Shift F9. There we go. And the EIP does change, and we are good with that, okay? Now, like I said, something I was scared of was those D's. You can see, like, right here, those D's are broken up. D, then D again. So, there's a lot of stuff in between there. I don't know, maybe jump, like... 30, no, because it has to be times 4. So, 32, I mean, that's times 4, right? 8 times 4, 30, yep. Yeah. Okay, so we should be able to maybe jump like 32, and then we'll end up with all these other Ds down here, because we did have that problem with that. So, let's go ahead and head back, and we will uh, go back into my exploit. We're going to worry about that here like a little bit. So that does work like right now. We got that 4112. All right. I'm just going to take a quick sna snapshot of that guy right there. For snippy tool, I shouldn't really say snapshot when I'm working on VM, should I? If we're going to start taking snapshots of their systems. 
So we can now control the EIP, right? Now what we need to do is we need to find that pop, okay, the pop, pop, right, right? So let's go ahead and um, reopen Immunity Debugger, run as administrator, MP3 Studio, okay, and then we'll do that pop, pop, ret, and we'll see if we can uh, control um, everything from there. Okay, so we're going to do that Mona SEH again, right? Um, and, yeah, we'll try to see if we can uh, find a jump point. Hopefully we don't have a million like we did last time. Let's do a Control F1, MP3 Studio, Attach. Then let's do a quick uh, Mona SEH. Seems like we have a lot because it froze again. Whenever it freezes, you know, you're going to have super... 2,507, we have more jump points than we did last time. Holy Jesus, 2571. So last time I said, hey, if you have a bunch of jump points, go ahead and get into Immunity Debugger, and you'll see that SEH file. All right, and this should be for this guy right here. Yep, MP3 Studio. So let's go ahead and start to work our way down this guy. So we're not going to do anything that has like a 0x04 next to it, 0x08, 10, nothing with anything next to it, okay? And like I said before, I do like to find the pop, I believe it was uh, ESI, I'm trying to find a certain pop here that I, I just like to use it because that's what last, worked last time for me. So if you're wondering what pop, pop, red is, pop, pop, red. That's what we're talking about, like right there. Um, let me go ahead and look at exactly what worked for me last time because I did like using that last time. So... Last time I used a ESI EDI I used last time. So I'm going to look for that again. So I'm look for ESI EDI. If they have any in here. ESI ECX. ESI EBX. Do we even have an EDI here? Pull F. EDI. Okay, we do EDI ESI. Last time I had an ESI EDI, but I guess we could try something like that try something new and we also don't want something that has two zeros in it too because that's not going to work either so we don't want that either because if because whenever we do our thing let's see we got a6 32 double zeros then 10 we don't want anything like that okay so that was not i don't think that one's gonna work for us however everything else looks like it has double zeros in it which is not too much fun for us like right there because that could probably that could break the uh the exploit, those double zeros and everything. Mm. X00 zero, zero is like a do not execute kind of thing. Not only a NOP sled, it's more of like a uh, says, hey, this is the end of the program usually. So let's go back up to the top, see what we got up here. Bunch of double zero zeros. Oh man, this one's going to be a little bit harder. I was looking over here, see if we uh, anything really hits hits me, like changes up. Over all the same crap repeatedly. Cause last time we also used something that wasn't even part of that program, wasn't even DLL files. No. Every single thing is part of that program. Oof. Uh, let's go ahead and try to crash it, and then do a Mona SEH. See if that changes anything. I don't think it will at all. But let's try to do that. So let's go ahead and. Uh, F9, get him up and running, we're going to crash it, then we're going to do a Mona SEH, and see if anything changes. So, we'll do a Mona SEH again, enter, I don't think anything's going to change, but we might as well try. See if uh, anything comes back different on here, whoops, or I can just minimize down everything. Hey, yoo-hoo. Oh, see, I want to minimize you. Okay, we still find all those pointers. Alright, doesn't look like anything's really changed in here. ASLR is fault and everything, so that's good. But uh, let's go ahead and exit out of here and open up the newest one. SCH. Open him up. And see if we get anything new in here. And it's not looking like we are. Okay, so looks like we're using double zeros at some point. Uh, what about this one like right here? Ooh, that's a good one. Good stop. Just stop on it. EBX, ECX. EBX, CX return. So we got C7FF0110. So that's a good one like right there. That one should work good. 
Um, I don't like these double zeros at the beginning over here. So let's go ahead and use one of these guys in here. We'll start from the very top here. We got this guy right here. We'll go ahead and grab him, actually, it looks like, and we'll try to use him. So let's just control C. All right, we can also try to use one of these ASCIIs also. Uh, ASCIIs work for me better also in the past. So let's go ahead and grab him, actually. All right, and we'll throw him into a, um, we'll throw him into our exploit, right? And we'll say um, jump. So we found a jump point, right, of that, like right there. Okay. So now that we found our jump point, what kind of magic is this? This is a buffer overflow on structured exception handling. Then ha. <laughs> so what kind of magic is this? How I feel sometimes too. All right, that is 100% how I feel sometimes. All right, so now we have that. What we can do now is we can start to, we can, we can see if that, um, first off, that jump point is even going to bring us to a um, pop pop and that return. Okay, so that's what we want to see. Before we do that, just like I was talking about earlier, we have to put a bunch of XCCs in there, which XCCs are breaks. That's what those are. Okay, so we're gonna, instead of Bs, we're going to do XCC, XCC, and then we can put XCC again. XCC. And we might change this later on to um, like XCC, XCC, X90, X90 to make that knob slide. Okay. Uh, then we'll make a bigger knob slide afterwards. All right. But that is just something that, you know, we, we're going to have to do that like right there. So from here, what we can do is we're going to enter. Or excuse me. We're going to put for our next buffer. We're going to do, remember, it's in little endian. So it starts at 0, 1. So it's going to be slash X 0, 1 slash x59, right, slash x01, slash x10, slash x01, slash x10. All right, no letters in there, huh? No letters this time. All right, well, hopefully that works. And we're going to send that back out again and see, do we actually land at a pop, pop, red? All right, so let's go ahead and save him. Control S 100 times, exit out of immunity, right click, Res Administrator, yes. MP3 Studio. It is magic, though. That's not magic. Oh, this this is something. I feel like it's magic. I don't know. Half the time I do this, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. All right, so <laughs> we're on structure stuff. This isn't just stack-based anymore. So we're here now. So let's go ahead and delete this exploit. Get this exploit going. We'll throw him into there. Uh, make sure that we actually attach this guy and everything. How about that first? Go ahead and get this guy attached and start it up. Alright, F9 to start this guy up. He's up and running right. <clears throat> cool. Awesome. And let's go ahead and throw his exploit into there. And we will see he does crash, okay? And now what we want to see is are we going to return to that address, right? So we threw all those XCCs in there. And now we want to see, hey, does that actually work? Alright, do we get a pop pop right? Okay. And I have to look at my notes to see, last time I did it, how did I actually do it? Yep, set the payload, again, except do not pass the exception this time. Yep, okay, so we're not going to pass the exception this time. I remember now. Now we're going to scroll down. See, that's what notes are for. We're going to scroll down. All those A's. All those A's. Oh, there we go. Now right here, at this SE handler, this should be a bunch of gibberish. That's okay. We're going to right-click. And we're going to follow and dump. At least we should be able to. Follow and disassembler. Follow and disassembler, okay? And we do. We have a pop, pop, ret. So that is good. That that showed us that, yes, we are pointing to the correct place. It did take it. It is correct, okay? Nothing got jumbled up there. So that's good, okay? So now what we have to worry about is these bunch of Ds, and those Ds are not able to do anything, right? So that's our next problem. So now we have to jump. Okay. Now let's think about how we're going to jump. All right. Let's think about, because we start off at X00, which we won't use, right? That's X01, 02, 03, 04, all the way up to 9. And then it goes X, what is it? 0A? Yeah, X0A, X0B, right? So if we want to jump, let's say 32, all right, by 32, then we need to put in that we are that we want to jump forward with EB22 because 22 will equal 32. That will be 32 bytes. EB22 will be 32 bytes. 
Okay, pretty much we're going to X22. All right, that's like what we're going to, which is going to be 32 bytes because of you have A, B, C, D, E, F. Once you, you have all those also, okay. So we got one through nine plus those guys. This could be 16 bytes, like right there. So we need to jump forward 32, which is going to be X22. Hit the I believe button on that one if you want, but that's what we're going to do next, okay? That's going to be EB, which is going to tell it, hey, we want to go ahead and jump 32 bits forward. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab this guy right here. And instead of a bunch of XCCs, now we're going to put in XEB, X32 or 22, I keep I kept saying. And then we're just going to put in a small little knob slot, okay? So it's like an X90, X90. Because we don't want to do anything after that, right? X90, X90, okay? And that's now our SEH. I know, okay? We're, we're jumping now, okay? From there, what we're going to do is we're going to put in some more. So we got our 500Ds, right? Our 500Ds, we don't know if those are actually going to work yet, right? But let's go ahead and throw in like buffer plus equals slash X90 times 30, right? Or uh, yeah, 30. So we'll throw in a knob slide of 30 more. We might have to change that up, you know, mix that up like a little bit or whatever else, okay? Then we'll throw in an XCC for a shell code like placeholder and then all of our Ds. So we'll do a buffer plus equals, I'll say why does that look different? Plus equals slash XCC, okay? And we're just gonna leave just one of those, all right? And then from there, that'll be our shell code placeholder. Shell code placeholder, or you just say SC placeholder, placeholder. And this is going to be knob sled. But your knob sled is no operation, so do not do anything there. Just keep going. Uh, like I said in the first video, uh, David Gamble explains that very, very well and how the knob sled actually works and everything like that, okay? So now we want to see do we actually jump past this point, like right here? Do we land down here and do our D's fit? That's what we want to see now. We're still sending 500 at it. That's that's a lot. Um, you know, we can probably get away with like 300 to 500, 300 to 400 even, you know, we probably get away with that. But we're still going to send 500 at it and see what can we do with that. We're going to exit out of here. We'll exit out, delete that guy. Control S will save him a bunch of times. Right click, run as administrator, MP3 Studio, and then make another one of those guys, right? Uh, Control F1. We'll go ahead and put that MP3 Studio back into there. We'll attach him. Uh, do an F9 with him, right? We're getting there. We are getting there. We're pretty close. Let's go ahead and drop him in there. He does freeze. All right, we got all these right. Here's our A's. Okay, cool, cool, cool. 4,112 of them, not 16, okay? And then from here, pointer to next SEH record, SEH handler. There's our knob sled that we made, right? Our little knob sled like right there. Knob sled, okay? And look at that. We do get all of our Ds, and they do look pretty good. Like, pretty much almost all of them made except for that last one like right there. So and that's with 500. So we should actually be good with that. It looks like we're jumping, and we made that little jump, 32-bit jump forward, and now we're bypassing that part where it's going to break our code, right? So it looks like we should actually be pretty good with that. Uh, we only did a lap slot of 30. We might be able to up that like a little bit. We might have to up that. We'll find out, okay? Um, but we'll see, right? So now we still need to do the same thing that we've done before. Okay, we still need to find all those bad characters. So I'm just going to go over to my Kali machine like real quick. Just do my Python script for bad characters. Which, of course, I don't even have in here. So I'll go ahead and bring you guys over to me. So you guys are just staring at nothingness like a little bit. There we go. All right, and we'll go ahead and go copy from desktop, buffer overflow, exploit. Nope. Uh, can we do bad characters? Bad characters, not pi, right there. And we'll go ahead and cat. That bad character, or actually we can run a Python 3, bad characters.py, we'll drop all these guys out. Now, just like I said before, mostly X0A and X0D are bad characters along with X00. X00 is in, in here. Okay. So, and I did not take those last notes. I did a control EIP, then from there, I have to do a, um, let me see here. I did not take good notes on that one, now did I? 
See, after we controlled the EIP, we did more of the SEH and everything, right? And we had to do a jump with that guy, right? So let me go ahead and figure out what did I do last. Go ahead and get back into this guy. Because I need to... Let's first, in our shell code, we're going to put all those guys in there. Our bad characters. Okay. There's all of our bad characters, like right there. They'll still be our shell code holder. That's fine. Okay. Um, home. Okay, we're good. All right, let's go ahead and save him. Control S a whole bunch. Um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll print screen this guy right here. New. There we go. Okay. Bam. All right. So we wanted. To, so we had to jump forward 32 bytes. Let me go ahead and head back over to my Linux machine, which you guys didn't see any of that. I just did. 20 IP more SH. All right. Um, so now what we did was crash the program, finding offset, 20 IP. Actually, found a jump point there too, didn't I? Um, so let me find that jump point one more time. I know I'm all over the place today. These are hard. I get all flustered and stuff. You know? <laughs> Head back into here. Boom. Okay. So, um, our jump is going to be the one highlighted. We check this. And exploit. From there, we had to jump forward 32 bytes. Bytes due to the and these, and that would be then the exploit that I just wrote up like right here. New. Okay, so so buffer. EB X22 is the is the uh, 32 bit jump. Then we put then we put in our regular jump followed God bless you. Yeah. Followed by not so do you need me to open it? Here I'll show you. So if you pull down on this part, hard, boom, and then you can lift it up, okay? Then the SD cards, that's okay. It's actually made to pop off that one. The SD cards in there, pull the battery out. Man, this thing is, I don't have any nails like right now, that's why. There you go. Thank you. Yep. All right, I love you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we did all that. We went snorkeling the other day, and we're uh, going to grab some pictures of it. So we got the jump by knob sled, right? And then from there, we uh, added in added in more Ds for future shell code. Code did not have bad bytes yet. Instead, that area was a break, which is XCC. All right, added in more Ds for shell code. Work added in bad points. All right, cool. So there we go. So now we have to find bad characters, right? Boom. Finding bad characters, and usually, like I said, X22 or X0, X22, X08, and X0D are usually bad characters. Watch, X0, X22 is going to be like a bad character now. <laughs> but we can go ahead and we can uh, still launch it at it and see what we find. Uh, we're going to keep everything the same. Control S a whole bunch. Delete that exploit. Uh, get immunity debugger. Yeah, okay, he's not running. All right, get him back up right. MP3 Studio, right click. Immunity debugger runs administrator. All right, and we'll get this guy up and running again. So file, attach, MP3 Studio. All right. You're doing pretty good so far for going in blind. However, everything's probably going to come to a crashing halt here in a second, huh? If you make no bad characters or something or some craziness. Alright, let's go ahead and get that guy up and running. 
and we'll go ahead and throw that guy in there. Okay, so we got all that right. Let's go ahead and go to ESP, follow and dump. <clears throat> There's all of our A's. Okay, now I don't remember if we need to forward it or not, but it looks like I remember last time. No, I do not. I do not forward it, do I? Because I remember last time we had a whole bunch of mumble jumble crap, and we it was just a bunch of gibberish. Like we couldn't do anything with it. So let's go ahead and because X zero A always seems to be a bad X zero A and X zero D, right? Let's go ahead and get rid of X zero A first. And then we'll run it again and see if we have all that gibberish again. Because usually we at least can see like one, two, three, four, five. Um, and we're not seeing anything in here, right? And X zero A can break it like that. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. X zero A. That doesn't always mean it's going to be a bad character. Okay, that is one thing. This is for SEH. Okay. So let's go ahead and restart this guy. Attach him again, right? Get him up and running. F9. I have not had print screen at all today, which is uh, something new. That was earlier today. Alright, so let's see here. Let's go ahead and go back in that ESP, follow and dump. Okay. Um, <laughs> X0A, we got rid of him, and we're still getting just a bunch of gibberish up top there. Scroll all the way down. Alright, because this is after the A's, isn't it? Okay, it's starting to look... No, it's not. Some more A's. There's a knob sled. Okay, here we go, here we go. I had to scroll down quite a bit. So we got one, two, three. I already got rid of X zero A, so who cares? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We already got rid of X zero A, so whatever. B, C, D, E, F. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 1 A, B, C, D, E, F. 20, 21, 22. You see why it's 32 bits now? 24, 25. 7, 28, 29, to A, B, C, D, E, F. Usually X, 0, D is also a bad character. That one's actually looking good this time. So we got down to 27, T, 2, F, 30, 31, 32, 33, 7, 38, 39, 3, A, B, C, D, E, F. 40s are looking good. Oh, right there. So after 4, B, it looks like 4, C might be a bad character. All right. Um, so that one could be bad. Um, 44, 45. Make sure it doesn't like 4C all of a sudden just pops up. There's 4C down there. Yep. So 4B, so it looks like maybe 4C is a bad character. Um, maybe we might have to do something with that. Right. Uh, let's go ahead and, um, Or it could always be X0D also messing with 4C. Yes. Yes. That's how bad those guys are. Let's go ahead and get rid of X0D first before we mess with anything else. Because those guys are jerks. X00, X0D. Should just start getting rid of them from the beginning, but they're not always bad. That's the only problem. So, like, X00 is actually not always bad. It's just bad. 99.9% of the time. Same thing with X00 and X0D. Or X0A and X0D. Same as that concept there. They're not always bad. Like, um... I think we've seen a couple now where it has not been bad. So that's... You don't just want to just immediately get rid of them. Attach... MP3 Studio, attach that. But he can mess with ones like way down the line also. Which makes it like... Oh, is this one bad or is this someone else? After saying I didn't, didn't hit print screen today, I just hit it twice in a row. I was wondering why it wasn't running. All right. Let's go ahead and throw that into there. I'll also make print screen F9 for me. And we'll go ahead and we'll go to ESP. Follow that in the dump, right? Follow and dump. Skip over all these A's. Skip over the B's. Oh, 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 oh. There's our knob sled. <clears throat> then we got 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. Four C is now here, but four D is not. See? 
So 4C is there, 4D is not. So 4D is most likely a bad character, and that's breaking the rest of our code also, that 4D. So that's not fun now, is it? So let's go ahead and get rid of 4D, see if that's what's breaking the rest of our code, or it could be 4C also, but it's probably 4D, it's either 4D or 4F that's breaking the rest of our code. So let's go ahead and um, try to get rid of 4D and see if that changes anything up. So 4D, X4D, I think that was it, right? X4D, 4C, yep. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of X4D, and we'll rerun him again. This part, like I always say, it is very, very tedious, but this is something that you need to do. We're going to check it out over here, too, just to make sure I'm not going crazy or anything like that. Not sled. Should be able to see it over here, also. Which I'm not. Oh, more four ones. Not sled. There we go. It just goes this way over here. See how it's like 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 7, 28, 29, 28, 30, 4D, right? Yep, yeah, 4D. Okay. So yeah, it's definitely uh, breaking something there. The program's definitely falling apart like right there. So let's go ahead and try it again. Out of that, an opsled isn't big enough. One of two. Could also be the knob sled not being big enough. That could actually be messing with us too. So let's go ahead and try this again though. And if we keep getting more and more bad characters, we'll try to up this knob sled to like 50 or something like that. Control S that. All right, and let's go ahead and get back into MP3 Studio, Muni Debugger, and then make another exploit for that. Right. This guy is MP3 Studio. And just so you guys know, you guys did like, you guys did say that you liked uh, the blind test more often. So if you're wondering, man, this is taking a while, you did say you like the blind test. <laughs> I'm holding you to that now. Exploit. There we go. Okay. And let's go ahead and check this one out now. Right click, follow and dump, phase. And then there we go. There's another one like right there, okay. Forty four for forty forty nine for A B C D. I already got rid of four D, didn't I? It might be four E then. That's messing with it. If it's not four D, that's most likely four E. Let's go ahead and we'll get rid of four E and then we're gonna up our knob slot also. Alright, we're gonna up that too. So let's also start writing down what we actually got rid of so far. So so far we have gotten rid of X zero zero X zero A, X zero D. Um, is that it so far? I think that's all the ones that. And then X four D, but I think we actually want to get rid of X four E. Whoops, I just copied that same line. X four E. I guess we want to do some of that. So let's go ahead and get rid of him. Let's go put the D back in there. That was a good one. All right, and then we'll. Keep everything else the same. Pull us out of there. Exit. That guy. Administrator, yes. MP3 exploit. Exploit drop in there. ESP, right click, file and dump. You don't know how to do the. OSCP and ECPPT ones by now. I can train you no more. At least if you don't know how to look for bad characters by now. I cannot help you anymore. <laughs> to 
twenties now, but what the hell? Now it's twenty. That's messed up. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, B, C, D's gone, E, F, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, then 20 is actually messing up. I wonder if 20 was messing it up before. And if I just wasn't seeing it, I feel like it wasn't. But then we got, no, it's got to be this one down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, B, C, D. I wonder if it's actually that one up there and 20 is actually messing it up. Which, this guy like right here is not being, I wonder if it's making it split. So, D and E might actually be good. D and E are most likely good. I think 20 is actually causing a problem. And it's causing it right here. So as soon as I do all my A's and everything right now, that knob sled and everything, where's it at? Right. So there's my knob sled sliding into these guys. 1, 2, 5, 7, B, C, D's already gone. F, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 is actually wrong. So I wonder if it's X20 that's actually messing it up. And it's not the other stuff. Get rid of X20. See if that does anything. This is the part that's a pain. So you know. So now we're going to get rid of it. So that line is coming back. So actually we got rid of D. Or E I mean. So let's go ahead and control F. Um, for D. We're actually going to add in 4E back into there. Because I don't think that he, we were actually supposed to get rid of him. God damn it. God damn it again. <laughs> Troll at 4D. Let's go play King of the Hill for that one. <laughs> X4E slash. Watch well, next King of the Hill I'm going to play. It's going to be a buffer overflow. Uh, maybe that's what our problem was. And 20 was actually giving us. Or not 20. Uh, yeah, 20 was actually giving us errors. X19 or X1A, excuse me, it's not 20, it's X1A, isn't it? Well, that's what was actually giving us errors, like right there. So let's go ahead and put over here X1A. Okay, let's go ahead and save him, and we'll send him back up again. I know what you guys are thinking on YouTube. This is exhilarating. <laughs> it's exactly what I'm thinking. Probably on Twitch also, they're probably like mad. This is how I want to spend my Sunday evening. All right, let's go ahead and run his administrator. Yes, MP3 Studio. If you like it, you like it, you know. So, I did ask uh, earlier. I say, hey, if you guys don't want to see really any more of these, I, I have to know that because it is exploit development September. If you guys want to continue to see me do exploit development, I will 100% continue to do it. Um, I just don't know how exhilarating, as I said, it is all for all of you guys. MP3 Studio, attach. F9. Because we are sitting at, what, 10 o'clock? No. Yeah, 10 o'clock right now. And we're... I think we're just about done. Once we can find all those bad characters, we will be done. Follow and dump. Let's go ahead and scroll down those A's, like, right there. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. Now they're all grouped together. Now we're getting somewhere. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, B, C, E, F, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 19, 1, B, C, D, E, F, 20, 21, 22, 27, 20, 29, 2, A, B, C, D, E, F, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 3, A, B, 3, 3, A, B, C, D, E, F, 40s, 4, A, B, C, D, E, F, 50s, A, B, C, D, E, F, 60s, A, B, C, D, E, F, 70s. A, B, C, D, E, F, 80s. Oh, we're getting there. We're almost there. 90s. Okay. Now we're in the A's. A0, A1, A2, A3, A4. B zero one two C's 
This is your stuff that, uh, I just tell you guys, like, yep, these are the bad characters, moving on. This is what I do when I'm actually doing it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so it looks like we're good because we got down to E, F, F, or excuse me, to uh, F, F. So I think we're good. That one looks pretty good like right there. So let's go ahead and say, hey, I think we found our bad characters right. Go ahead and grab a print screen of that guy. So I believe we found our bad characters. So now what we can really, we can start actually writing up that exploit now. Right? So... Find the bad character characters after the not sled. Follow the SCP data. Alright, so now we can start typing up our shell code, right? We should be able to, right? So we should be able to because shell code. Let's go ahead and review what we've done so far. So far we've we have gotten into other program, found out that it was 4116A that actually killed it, right? It's 4116, but minus 4 for the SEH handler, which is going to be this guy right here now, right? That's actually making our jump and everything. So we did that, okay? Uh, from there, we found our jump point, right? Uh, just as we usually do. So we found a jump point. We have a knob sled going. We found our bad characters, at least we think we did. And then we put in our D's for uh, extra for our future shell coding, right? So what we should be able to do now is just put that shell code into the D's. I keep saying that. I keep wanting to laugh, but I know that's not right. And we should be good in all honesty. So we should just be able to put our shell code there. So we go ahead and delete that for now, just to make sure. We'll delete that. And let's go ahead and make that shell code, I guess. Let's go ahead and hop back over into Kali Linux, right? And we'll go ahead and we will make that shell code. So that's going to be, uh, I mean, we can just pop calculator first. If you want. MSF Venom, TAC P, we say Windows, um, exact command calculator, right? We're going to write that in F, okay? It's going to be slash X00, slash X0A, slash X0D, slash, I forgot what the last one was, X1A, slash X1A, okay? We're going to write that C shell coding. Um, and that should be it. So let's do an exit function equals thread, just in case. And yeah, that should pop calculator. Should. <laughs> Hopefully. Alright, control shift C him. Let's go ahead and head back over to my Windows machine. And we will uh, throw that into there. So, as our buffer now, we're going to go ahead and throw into that there, okay? And we'll go ahead and do this the proper way. Get that, like, right there. We can get rid of this extra for future shell coding. Throw that guy, like, right there, okay? So, he's encompassing all that, right? And that's going to be buffer plus equals. Um, I don't think we're going to need an offset afterwards. We can... Might need one. Might need to mess around with an offset. So if this doesn't work the first time, I'm gonna I'm gonna change this to like 35, 40, 45, 50, things like that. But we'll stick with 30 like right now. Let's control S him. We'll save him. All right, and let's go ahead and exit out of here. And we're about to have the moment of truth here, which probably won't work. Delete that exploit. All right. Well, control F1. We'll put this guy into there, which I thought I already opened him. I guess I didn't. Didn't click fast enough. Then we'll rewrite that exploit over there. Um, and we'll file, attach, mp3 studio, attach him. Cool. I don't know why I just minimized out of that. Let's go ahead and open him back up. And we'll go ahead and throw him in there and hopefully we pop a calculator and we do not. All right, that's why I see. He did crash, though. Um, I'll just study a whole bunch of exception handlers now. Uh, I don't know why I actually put him into immunity. I don't think I was supposed to do that. I think I'm just supposed to open him up and just drop that into him. So, 
We'll throw him, throw him into there, and is he going to pop the calculator? Try to do something. He closed. Ha! Huh. <laughs> well, I mean, that was pretty good. It was a good try, right? So let's go ahead and change this to 50 for an half slide. If this still doesn't work, we have to look at a different one up here, but we know what our bad... Oh, crap! I still have this guy all in there. <laughs> I still had all those bad bites in this. They just got crushed. <laughs> all right, delete him. Keep that in there. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, let's change it back to 30, because that's what I had as before, right? So, <laughs> you know, you hate to see it. I wonder why they just closed out. Like, what the hell are you doing to me? All right, we'll open up him. We'll run this MP3 exploit again. We'll go ahead and throw him into there. And we pop the calculator. So, this does work. So, can we pull a reverse shell off of this now? Let's go ahead and, uh, oh my god, so much open. Let's go ahead and turn off real-time protection. No, I don't want to check for, don't ever check for virus updates again. You're going to find so much crap on here. My god. That would be literally terrifying. Alright, so let's go ahead and, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh god. Let's go ahead and do this again, but we'll do a MSF Venom. Attack P Windows slash shell reverse TCP. Uh, we need those bad bytes in there again, right? That's where that's the one that we actually did earlier today. Was that one for SEH? We had X00, X08, X0D, and X1A. So we have X00, X0D. What is going out there? X0A, X1A. Am I still connecting to I and E? Who am I connected to up here? I'm still connected to I and E. Here, you can, here, exit out of there. There we go. Alright, uh, I'll do a function, exit function thread. We'll do an L host. We'll open that right back up again. I, IP config, or IF config, sorry. IF config 192.168.0.21. We'll do an L port of 1337 because we think that we're elite, even though it probably won't work. 1337, write it in C. Let's go ahead and enter on there. Let's we'll start up uh, MSF console. Attack Q, use exploit multi-handler right with exactly this guy right here for our payload. Use exploit multi-handler, set the payload to that, set the L host to myself, set the L port to 1337. We'll go ahead and run him. And let's go ahead and grab all this, see if we can get a reverse shell back to us. We already popped the calculator. So now if we add this guy, we should just be able to get a reverse shell in all honesty. That should be about it. We'll go ahead and throw him there. Control S a whole bunch, right? Delete that exploit. Open up the MP3 studio again. And let's see if we can and also get that guy up and running. I think I broke MP3 studio. See he's not seeing want to open like right now. Did I break him? Runs administrator. Yes. Control delete. Do I have to send a control delete to this guy? Input keyboard control delete. Task manager. I think we like broke broke him. I think he's broke. Google crash handler. <laughs> yeah, we can probably get rid of that crap. Um Yeah, I think we like did we break break him? Let's go ahead and try to open him up in immunity. There we go. We'll just, like, just make him work. Right click. Runs administrator. Yes. We're not even going to attach him this time. We're just going to get him at least open file. And we're just going to put him in there. There you go, big guy. Okay. You're up and running again? Good. Exit off here. Let's go ahead and get you over here. Did that work, what I just did? No, it did not, did it? Oh, man. I broke, broke you, didn't I? You died, huh? First music. Let's see if I do this. Oh, that's just an icon. Let's see if I do this. That's an icon. That's a BMP file. Well, I'm sorry. I think I might have broke, broke him. Do we have to, like, exit out of here? You know what? I'm going to save all this. Like, well, I'm going to save it. Save no matter what. Let's go ahead and exit out of this machine. We'll go right back into it, and then we'll go from there, I guess. Huh. Because that, that was crappy. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what I did for my MSF, uh, my exploit over here. I didn't realize that you guys probably did not see any of that, so that's what I got for all that stuff. 
All right. There you go. Um, yeah, and I'll exit out of that machine, go back into it. Best way to spend a Sunday evening. Go back into it, and we'll see uh, what's going on with that. Cause I have broke, broken MP3 Studio. And that's how you break a program. There we go. All right, uh, let me go ahead and get that Windows machine up and running again. Windows. But that is two now structured, structured exception handlers that we have done. Uh, so what is a structured exception handler? I'm going to wait for the chat actually on that one, see if anyone knows what that actually is or what it does for a program. Because I never really knew. I mean, I had to read about it. I was like, I don't know. the heck is this? What am I even attacking here, you know? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, let's try to open that guy back up. See if he opens. Okay, so we opened that time. Cool. Um, let's go ahead and throw exploit at him and see if we get a callback for it. And we do. We have a command shell open. ID, or sorry, who am I? And we do, okay? So, if we were to open up that in administrator, though, it would be even better. Um, I want to make sure that this crap isn't going to kick me out and all that good stuff. That's not what I wanted anyways. Oh, yes it was. I want the one where it tells me manage settings. That's what I want. Real-time protection, yeah. Yes, okay, exit off here. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, right-click. I guess we'll close that window. Uh, wait, close the program. Because if we run it as administrator, then we'll also get in there as even higher level. Uh, so let's go ahead and run that again. And hopefully we can run this program again. I don't know, after that one. I don't know anymore. I'm just right clicking on it. I'm just typing it right as administrator. And I'm dropping that exploit straight back into them. Because I know you guys are watching the Cali machine like right now. And I should have just got a call back. Should have. I have no idea. You guys don't know either. Um, doesn't look like I did. I think I actually broke broke the program again. Yeah, I think it's broke broken again. So we're just going to stop messing with him because we keep like royally breaking him. So what Raymond I ran was administrator, he uh, he did not like that. So we have broken the program, we got a call back as you see like right here. Right? Let me actually I did not take any of those notes like right there. So let me go ahead and control the print screen. Boom, and I'm gonna run that one more time here. Shell code. There we go. We threw that shell code over into my windows, right? There we go. Okay. Uh, you guys should actually be able to see it now. What do you guys see here? Why don't you guys see it? Oh, because I exited out one of them, huh? So we have to actually delete that window capture. Give me one second. I'm trying to get you guys back over to my other machine. Windows capture at source. Add a new source instead. Windows capture one. Or win. At source. And this one's going to be... Boom, done, there you go, okay. All right, cool, so there we go. All right, so there we go. All right, so we'll uh, we'll hop back over in here and look at my shell code and everything. Uh, right click, we can edit with idle, whatever. All right, so we broke the system, we got everything that we need to get. We threw our shell code in there and stuff, right? And then we were able to get that reverse shell back, right? So that's my shell code. Boom. All right. We'll go ahead and throw that into my Kali Linux machine for my notes, like, real quick. Which will obviously be available on the GitHub. And then we'll go ahead and we'll run that guy one more time. Just so I can show, yes, this does actually work. And no, I'm not lying. And all that good stuff. Delete him. There's that. There's MP3 Studio. He opens up. We'll throw him into there. He kind of breaks. We go back over to our Linux machine. And let me go ahead and get you guys back over to my Linux machine. There we go. Did I do a who am I? And you can see, yep, that 100% works. So, that is a SEH. Uh, so, structure exception handler. Still going back to chat, see if you want to answer that question. So a structure exception handler is for when a program very first starts up to make sure that it actually starts up correctly. 
So, you know, if it's a little bit like the bytes move like a little bit, something like that, it goes ahead and makes sure that starts up correctly or anything within a program, make sure it starts up correctly. That's all it does. And we're just attacking that portion of it. So that is now our second structure exception handler that we have attacked so far. Let's go ahead and check out INE and we'll see uh, what else uh, we can attack or what else we're going to attack next time. Okay, so I don't know if I can actually even show you. I'm not logged in. Yeah. Uh, well, I can still go to cybersecurity. Exploit development student. Windows exploit development. And so far we did one of this guy. We did this guy. We just did this like right here. So we still have an easy chat one to do, which that'll be a lot of fun. And then after that, we got some Windows egg hunting to do. And also some, uh, obviously, uh, yeah, Vault Server uh, egg hunter stuff. So all the ones I'm getting off of here, they are publicly available. So I'm not giving you something that you don't like, oh, man. Um, so you can download them just like the one from today is on ExploitDB. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys like this. Uh, leave me any comments. If you want to see more of these, let me know. And that's going to be about it for today um, or tonight. Yep, you guys have a good one, and I will see you guys next time.